Yeah, you know, as I mentioned, that you know you want to believe in the day of Qiyam, a day of judgment, that needs to read the Quran to understand, to ponder, to think. It is a big effort. And one of the important that can help people to understand the Quran deeply is to understand the interrelation between the verses and surahs of the Quran and to understand the major theme of every surah. So that, in a, that is the something developed by Maulana Hamiduddin Farah in India, who died in the year 1929. So he has spent 30 years of his life to do research. Uh, to, and he got uh, this thing very clear to his mind. He wrote in detail that the Quran, the way it is now, it is divine order. It's starting with the Surah Al-Fatiha and ending with uh, Surah Al-Nas. It is divinely done. Each surah has got a relation with the surahs after that and with the surah before that, each surah. If you change the order, the Quran will change. Quran must remain in this order. Similarly, all the verses of the Quran, they have relation with the verses before that and with the verses after that. And then at the same time, he said, each surah has got its central theme. And all the verses in that surah, they are related to that main central theme. So this is a very important. Once you understand the theory properly, theory of the coherence, it will develop your understanding of the Quran. Like I mentioned to you that the argument for the Day of Judgment is not only the Quran. The argument for the Day of Judgment is human being himself and other creation. And that is something if you people read the Quran, understanding the coherence and the system and relation, it will help. For example, if you read Surah Al-Qiyamah, Mawla Faraj written actually whole tafsir of Surah Al-Qiyamah, making every verse very clearly and the connection and relation, it becomes clear from that surah that human soul, human nafs, it is a proof that a day of judgment will come. What he said is, you see this surah Quran said, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة. Mawla Faraj's argument is, Quran said, Day of judgment, resurrection. And then the Quran said, Nafsul Lawama, a soul which blames you. Why is it that when you do something wrong, you feel guilty? Nobody sees. First time when you do something wrong, why you feel guilty? Why you feel something? Uh, uh, if you just lie, why, what makes you to think, feel you know, uneasy? Maybe don't, people don't know. Nobody discovers your, your problem. Still you feel uneasy. When you cheat, you feel uneasy. When you deceive the people, you feel uneasy. Whenever you lie, fabricate any story, anything, something is in your heart blaming you. Mawla Farahi says, Quran using this argument to tell you that deep in the heart of the human being, deep in the nature, it is put that whatever you do, you can hide from the people, but you cannot hide from your Lord. And on the day of judgment, you are going to be accountable. This fear is deep in the heart of the people. That what Nafs al is. When people do something wrong, guilt is there inside. Blame is there. If you read this surah, as it makes tafsir, Qiyamah becomes, day of resurrection becomes very clear from, you know, from things around you. So this is not only the, many other things. So Mawla Farahi has developed that is people should read the Quran as it is as a book. You know, book which is connected, related to each other. Everything was mentioned in one surah, it has relation to each other. So, you know, I can give many, many examples, but I don't have time here. When you come for the course, you can see really, this way of learning the Quran, it helps you. Then it makes you Quran like a book. Otherwise, it's not a book. If you think, you know, Quran discuss so many things, scatter, no relation, then how can it be book? Book means it has beginning and end. It means it proceeds from one argument to the other argument. If the Quran has no relation and no connection and, you know, you know uh, uh, no thing, how can it be a book? It's a book. Quran keeps instituting a book. Means it has beginning, it has end, it proceeds from one point to the other point, from second point to third point, and in the same surah, from it has beginning to the and end, it has order. So this order, this sequence, this interrelation between surah and verses, and, the, and, and being connected with the major theme, it is something we don't make effort to learn. And that's what pondering of the Quran means. So, inshallah, when you come for this course, you know, I'll teach this theory of you know, Nizam and Quran being coherent and around the central theme in, in, in much more detail uh, in the light of uh, writing of Mawla Farai and also from many, many examples.